So now that we've got our nuts done. <laughs> like this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, He's just like it, us, man. Jesse. Kind of what we're doing today. We're working with nuts and balls. What up, y'all? And welcome back to the Fit Man Cook Kitchen. And today we got a special guest. We got the king of meatballs. I'll take it. I'll hey. Take it. <laughs> Michael Chernow. If you've never eaten at the meatball shop or Seymour's, you are missing out. I remember I did this project once in NYC and they took me to the meatball shop. And let me tell you, I was in a food coma afterwards. <laughs> Stuff was so good. And it's one of those dishes where I, I feel like it's so simple, but yet the flavor, it's just, there's an art to meatballs, right? Oh, without a doubt. One of the cool things about the meatball shop and really the reason why it kind of came to be was I wanted the ability to be able to separate my protein, my vegetables, mm. my carbohydrates. It was like a, for me, when I was sort of stepping into the world of better living, Yeah. I didn't want a big, huge bowl of pasta all the time, but I loved spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah. So I wanted to have the meatballs and tomato sauce okay. with a bunch of veggies. And that's how I came up with the idea for the meatball shop. Bowls of meatballs, a bunch of sides, choose your own adventure. And that's that's why I think that's why people really love it. Yeah, you know, and this is the first time I've ever heard a New Yorker say that they want meatballs and veggies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, do those things go together, Jesse, you think? I don't think so, man. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, the, 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 there, there's only one Just, way uh -huh. to get lame. Yes, right? that's true, but you're gonna have so many Italian grandmamas oh. riding me and beating down the door to I was, square up. <laughs> I was in battle okay. with every single Italian grandmother. <laughs> See what I mean? In all of New York. If you ask an Italian grandmother, okay. <laughs> she's gonna tell you it's a blend of three different meats. Yeah. Veal, pork, and beef. And typically used sort of old bread and a lot of people soak it in milk. Mm -hmm. And then the secret, is cheese in the meatballs. Mm. So you put cheese in the meatballs. At the meatball shop, we use ricotta. So mm -hmm. ricotta just made it supple, but you'll find all different kinds of cheese in meatballs, but that's really the blend of it. It's a mix of, of herbs. Yeah. It's the trifecta, beef, pork, veal. It's bread. Some soak it in milk, some don't. Some say it works, some, you know. I've seen the ones soaked in milk and they are really good. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, and, and, that's, and that's really it. Herbs, the, the trifecta of meat, bread, and cheese. And, um, and, a, and a damn good tomato sauce. Well, walk us through how do you make yours, because we're not gonna be using three meats. Right? right, so today we're gonna make a meatball that actually originated as a lamb meatball. Mediterranean lamb meatballs really opened up my eyes to the beauty of lamb. Okay. And, uh, and so I've used the base of that recipe, which is just Mediterranean inspired ingredients. Yep. Um, but I replaced the lamb with bison, because I love bison. Hey, yeah. and that is a nod to Texas too, because you're here in Dallas right now. So, you know, we are bison country, <laughs> so I love it. Bison really takes the best of the flavor profile from beef, mm -hmm. except it removes some of the unnecessary fat as far right. as I'm concerned. Yeah, so and it's not gamey either. Like some it's of not, the other ones. it's not, it's not. And, and you know, if you're out there listening and you've never had bison before, I promise you, you're gonna love it. So let's talk about what's in these meatballs. All right, so in these meatballs, we got some parsley. All right. We've got a little basil. You can also swap out the basil for mint if you want, or you could do both. Okay. Uh, we've got some rice. So instead of using bread mm. uh, in this meatball, we're gonna use some cooked rice. All right. uh, we're gonna chop up these almonds and we're gonna toast them a little bit, get a little toasted almond flavor, nice little texture. Yeah. And then we've got some golden raisins. Love it. Texture, flavor. Um, so what about the seasoning? Is that gonna just come from the herbs? Uh, we're gonna season with salt and pepper. All right. Yeah. yeah, this is this is gonna be brand new because usually, I don't know, I just feel like it's always, you have tons of different spices, but I guess that's just the beauty of the fresh ingredients coming together. Totally, and, and also like the cool thing about raisins, right? Like people are probably asking themselves, raisins and meatballs. Yeah. There's something that we call in the, in the world of, of cooking umami, mm -hmm. right? And so for me, I love mixing a little bit of sweet and a little bit of salt, I feel like that is the most sort of salivating kind of flavor profile you can introduce somebody. Because most right. people like salt and most people like sweet. Yeah. And when you can bring them together and mesh them really well so it's not sweet and it's not salty, they just really complement each other. Raisins do such a good job of adding a little bit of sweetness, 
without overdoing it. Well, I'm sold, bro. All right, so let's get started. Let's go. Okay. All right, so we're gonna toast these almonds. Use a stainless steel pan, low heat. Um, once it comes to temperature, once it comes gets, gets a little warm, I'm just gonna dump these almonds in. Very, very simple. The only downside to toasting nuts in general is you just kinda gotta keep your eye on them because you okay. don't want them to burn. All so right. every once in a while, just give them a little toast. Be about two to three minutes, I'll Okay. Say. All right, these are done. And oh, I you can smell. Yeah. You can smell those. They smell um, great. <laughs> that's when you know these things are done, when you start to smell the aroma of the nuts. Now you're gonna wanna let it cool in here for a little bit. Now that these bad boys are cool. Yep. We're gonna take our pestle and we're just gonna get in there and just smash them up. Sweet. You make this look so therapeutic too. <laughs> like it's like, I'm like mesmerized and you're watching the nuts crush up. We're gonna wanna use about a quarter cup of this. So now that we've got our nuts done. <laughs> like this. <laughs> I know, right? Thank you. Yeah, He's just like it, us, Jesse. Yeah, really yeah, nuts, <laughs> nuts, balls. Yeah, that's kind of what we're doing today. We're working with nuts and balls. We're gonna put some parsley in these meatballs. Yep. Boom. Yeah. That's that's basically what we're gonna need. And that's all we need for this recipe. That's all we need. Um, and then we're gonna do the same thing with this with this basil. I like to tear basil. Is there a difference between cutting it up or tearing it? You know, I mean, I do think that when you tear basil. Um, it potentially is going to release a little bit more of the oils, the basil oil, mm -hmm. right? When you cut it up, you're kind of moving stuff around. So right. I do kind of like tearing it as well. And you can kind of put anything into a meatball, kind of just like a, like a meatloaf. Back in the day, <laughs> that's what they did. Yeah, sweet. Let's get the bison. Let's go. This is Texas cattle right here, bro. <laughs> Boom. All right, so we got our lean bison here. Now we just put everything together. That's it. Okay. So we're gonna add our parsley and basil. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add our raisins. We're gonna add our jasmine rice. Um, and then we're gonna add our almonds. And then we're gonna season it with some salt, some pepper, and mix we're gonna up. mix. All right. I have some gloves. You wanna get your hands dirty? You want some gloves? I mean, man, I'm not a man to put on a set of gloves. All right, I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to test you. <laughs> <laughs> he asked for gloves, I was gonna talk about it. <laughs> you want the, the, the ingredients to look like they're evenly dispersed throughout. These are gonna be so good, dude. I know. I'm actually salivating right now just looking at it. Like, it looks really good. Are we doing small balls or big balls? Well, I think it's, it's preference, right? <laughs> okay. It's a preference thing. So if you like uh, small balls, by all means, <laughs> this is gonna be If you like bigger balls, you can always use yeah. a three ounce scoop. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's totally up to you. At the meatball shop, we use an ounce and a half scoop, an ice cream scoop. You're gonna wanna scoop some, some meat. Okay. You take your hand, and you just kinda take off the excess here, all right? You've got this perfect meatball, and you literally just drop it in. Oh, you're not gonna form it anymore? That's it. And I'll portion out the whole thing. Okay. So I'm done with all the meat, and then I will line them up in straight lines. Okay. All making sure that they touch each other. Oh, did they touch? They touch. And the reason why you want the meatballs to touch is because they ultimately end up keeping in all the juices when they're all touching each other. And if when they're separate, the juices kind of seep out. When they're touching each other, the juices kind of stay in. It's really I've never in. heard that before. Yeah. So one last thing is I always like to add just a little bit of salt right before I put them in the oven. Okay. So we're gonna take these meatballs and we're gonna put them in a preheated oven at 450 degrees, uncovered for 15 minutes. All right, so this is a little bit of a hack. This is a tomato right. sauce hack. Okay, <laughs> I love that. Chefs spend a lot of time making sauce, right. right? I mean, some chefs spend a lot of time making yeah. sauce. I worked at an Italian restaurant where the chef owner of the restaurant literally had his sauces cooking overnight. Like oh, I'm talking God. about nine to 12 hours for his ragu sauce, it was insane. You do not <laughs> need to do that. And this okay. is a quick 10 minute <laughs> way to get a restaurant quality tomato sauce okay. um, without all that crazy work. So you basically buy any really simple, basic marinara sauce at your supermarket. Uh, we're gonna take some onions, we're gonna chop them up, we're gonna dice them up. We're gonna let them cook in some olive oil, cook them till they're translucent, so you can basically see through them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna add in your marinara sauce that's already made. You don't wanna get a sauce that has a bunch of stuff in it. You just wanna get a sauce that has a little bit of garlic in it maybe. A couple of rosemary twigs, um, and we're gonna beat it with the back of a knife. And that is ultimately going to release some of the oils in the rosemary. Uh, and then we're gonna put it right on top of the sauce. We're gonna let it cook. 
and, uh, and, and we're gonna take the rosemary out. We're not gonna eat the rosemary. It's just gonna permeate the sauce, and then we're gonna go to town and chow. All right, so this sauce looks like it's ready. It's been simmering. You can see some bubbles coming up. Yeah. Sauce is hot. Now we're just gonna drop these meatballs in there. Oh my God. And that's really it. Yeah. Meatballs are warm, sauce is warm. That's about like, a, in all, that was about 20 minutes, 25 minutes worth of work. Yep. I can do that. All right, so I thought that for the pasta, instead of having some, some whole wheat pasta, we kind of keep this paleo friendly since the meatballs are almost paleo friendly, minus the grains, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we make some veggie pasta. That's so good. I got some zucchini here. Gonna use the julienne peeler. Then some yellow squash. Then got the big carrot. And since the carrots tend to be a little bit harder, I like to just to pop them into the microwave with a little bit of water, wilt them a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's that nice steam action. And then put everything together. How do y'all say it up there in New York? Pasta, pasta? Pasta. Okay, all right. <laughs> and when do we get to eat? Now. <laughs> Let's plate this bad boy. We can garnish it with some almonds. <laughs> Looks like Parmesan. Yeah, a little bit of parsley. Beautiful. <laughs> That's it, man. Man, it looks good. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh. And can I just <laughs> say a little something? You know when you know a meatball is a good meatball? When you can take a meatball and just cut it with a fork. Oh. At the meatball shop, for the first five or six years, we didn't even serve knives. We didn't even put knives out. Because we just wanted to say, hey, yeah. you don't need one. You know? I'm yeah. going to keep on eating this. Jesse? What say you? Oh, this will taste test. Make me watch you guys mm -hmm. eat these things the whole time. <laughs> oh my god. Mm -hmm. What you think? It's all right. I mean, yeah, it's a few it, years of this suddenly. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. All right, y'all, that is it for today's video. I know that you are going to love these meatballs. I, I feel like I need to go onto my website and take down every single meatball recipe because these right here are hitting so much. Like I'm not gonna make meatballs the same ever again. So thank you for that. Be sure that you follow Michael Chernow at, at Michael Chernow on Instagram. Look him up on Facebook, but also check out his amazing podcast. It's called Creatures of Habit with a K. And he's got this dope oatmeal as well. It's called, what is it? Meal one. Uh, he said, <laughs> <laughs> he was real, he tried to do meal it real one. slow. Meal one. I was teasing him because it sounded like mayo and he said meal. <laughs> mayo, mayo, mayo one. Mayo one. Mayo one. <laughs> meal one. But y'all, it's some really great stuff. It's flavored and it's, it's a great way to start the day. So go ahead and check that out. And remember to catch up with us on At The Table Podcast. We talk about relevant topics of today around good food like today. We're going to take these meatballs and we're going to go to the table and we are going to break down how he became the meatball king and what he learned from that because he's got a really very story. It's not just about meatballs. It's about a little bit of success and maybe a little bit of a failure too. A lot right. of failure. All right, and we're gonna unpack that right now at, at the table. Thanks so much for watching y'all. Until next time, keep it what? Keep it healthful, but never ever boring. Boom, peace.